Okay, it is now 6 p.m. and we will proceed with the public session of the Business and Facilities Staying Committee. At this time, uh, Superintendent Schemey is going to give us uh, acknowledge um, our land uh, acknowledgement of traditional territory. Simcoe County District School Board acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional land of the Anishinaabek people. The Anishinaabek include the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Bodwami nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. Thank you. And in the roll call, I'm just going to make you aware that we have um, regrets this evening from Trustee Grummet, Harrigan, Strawn, and soon Trustee Zhu, you, and electronic participation. I see at this time we have Trustee Wilson. Student Trustee Yu and Trustee, Student Trustee Il, and um, I can see that they are online. I'm going to call for item number three, the approval of the agenda. May I have a mover to uh, move the agenda, uh, moved by Trustee Lloyd, seconded by Trustee Rafiq. All those in favor? And that is carried. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest? I do not see any. There are no presentations. And at this time, I would ask that we would go into closed session. Trustee Lloyd? Oh, move, okay. Move by Trustee Lloyd, seconded by Trustee Bites. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. All right, so we are now back into our public session of business and facilities. The next portion of the agenda is items for decision. Uh, number one, revisions to policy 2350, disposition of surplus real, real property. Uh, this is uh, B, item BF-D-1 and it's going to be uh, presented by Superintendent Van Nisman. Thank you and uh, through the chair to the table. Um, so the report you have in front of you uh, tonight for a decision is a revision to our policy 2350 disposition of surplus real property. Um, this policy is up for review. Uh, the policy relates to the disposition of realty property owned by the school board and it aligns with ministry direction through the Education Act and Ontario Reg 444-98. Uh, um, there is only some minor clerical formatting updates that are uh, recommended at this time and with that I'll take any questions. Any questions or comments on the report? On, online, I don't see any. Okay. So we do have a, a motion. Sorry, I'm slowly left handed. That the Business and Facilities Standing Committee recommend that the Board approve the revisions to Policy 2350 Disposition of Surplus Real Property as set out in Appendix C of uh, Report Number BF D 1, Revisions to Policy 2350, Disposition of Surplus Real Property, dated April 5th, 2023. Is there a mover for this motion? Moved by Trustee Bites, seconded by Trustee Wilson. Any questions? I'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that motion is carried. Next item under items for decision is revisions to policy 2115, trustee expenditures, item BF-D-2, Superintendent Van Nisman. Thank you. Thank you and uh, through the chair to the table. Um, so the uh, decision that uh, report that you have in front of you tonight is with regards to policy uh, 2115, trustee expenditures. This policy relates to reimbursement of out-of-pocket expenditures by trustees. Uh, the update includes clerical and the inclusion of hyperlinks to the applicable administrative uh, memorandums or APMs, um, if you will. Uh, updated language direction regarding the cellular plan um, through unlimited Canadian SMS text messaging and Canadian long distance for board business and direction for traveling outside Canada has been uh, added or uh, updated. 
And then we've also uh, updated to remove language around P cards, which operation, operationally is not a practice that has been utilized for a number of years with the uh, trustees. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions. Questions on the policy? Uh, Trustee Lloyd. Thank you, and through you to Superintendent Van Nispen, and this just sort of has come up uh, uh, this week, uh, um, where we, with for our trustee expenditures, we have a budget, and uh, um, I think that budget is getting uh, squeezed significantly with the increase in costs, and um, I know that, you know, there was a point in time where the budget allocation was such that, you know, we could probably anticipate going to two uh, Tier Public School Board Association events throughout the year. <clears throat> And the budget covering it and that is getting harder and harder so I'm just wondering if um, there are any surplus in the budget with respect to trustee expenditures or how trustees might um, uh, have additional funds available if they wish to go to a second OPSPA event whether it be the labor symposium or the annual general meeting in June Superintendent Nisman and through the chair uh, to the chair. Um, and so um, one of the practices that we um, have uh, done in the past is um, if there's a trustee, um, as each trustee has an, has an allocated piece of the budget for PD, um, if they identify that they're done for the year, they're not going to be attending any further um, PD sessions, um, that they offer up or ask to reallocate their their allocated budget to another one of the trustees that maybe is going to an additional session or requires going to an additional session um, that way we're staying within the trustee envelope um, that's budgeted um, but we are utilizing all the funds for trustee uh, activities trustee lloyd uh, thank you i just think that's beneficial for everyone to know because i think they're um, uh, there might be a couple of individuals who are looking for some additional funds. So if anyone is not planning on attending anything further and would like to allocate excess funds, I think that would be very helpful. So thank you very much for that. Any further questions or comments? I do not see any. The um, recommendation, I'll read it. That the Business and Facilities Standing Committee recommend the board approve the revisions to policy 2115, trustee expenditures, as set in Appendix C of report number BF D 2, revisions to policy 2115, trustee expenditures dated April 5th, 2023. Is there a mover? Moved by Trustee Wilson, seconded by Trustee Talbot. All those in favor? And that is carried. So our next item uh, in items in the agenda is for information. Number one, Simcoe County Student Transportation Consortium proposed, be propo proposed bell time efficiencies 2023-24 school year. Report BF-I-1 and Superintendent Van Nispen is going to take this report for us this evening. So it's a change from what's printed in the agenda. Thank you and through the chair to the table. Uh, before you this evening is a report on the proposed bell time efficiencies proposed by the uh, Simcoe County Tran Student Transportation Consortium for the upcoming school year. Uh, you will note that there are two options. Uh, the first option will provide for a cost savings of $440,000 and the second option will provide for a cost savings of $357,000. With both options, we require the cooperation of the co-terminus co board to realize these savings. That being said, the bell time changes for the four SCDSB schools are the same for either option. Please note that staff are in support of the efficiencies moving forward um, at Admiral Collingwood and Severn Shores with a 15 minute change in start times for both schools respectively, as well as a 45 minute change in start times for Coldwater Public School and Moonstone Public School. At this time, I can also report that the Coterminous Board will be moving um, forward with option two and presenting that to their board of trustees as the approved option. Um, just for additional um, clarification, um, at this point in time, the current bell times at Admiral Collingwood is a start time of 9.10 and Severn Shores is at 9.10 and Coldwater uh, Public School and Moonstone both start at 8.45. And with that, I'll take any questions. 
Okay, so we have questions. I'll start on this side. Trustee Rafiq and then Trustee Bites. I saw hands. Thank you very much and through the chair. Um, kind of a silly question, I'm sure. I looked at this and I was a little confused at first thinking why would I not choose option the option that saved us more money. Um, but I'm guessing it's dependent on our coterminous board as well, which option they're picking. I don't know. I looked at it and didn't see much difference, but I felt like I was probably missing something there. Van Nisman. Thank you, and uh, through the chair fee. Um, so for us, um, as I've indicated, there is no difference from our side um, as to option one or option two. It, is, it does reside on the side of the coterminous board. Option one is a greater time change for their schools that are affected, whereas option two is a time change but of lesser effect. Um, and it is option two that they are going to be taking to their board for, uh, for moving forward. Okay. Trustee Bites. Yes, thank you. Through you, Chair Armstrong, so to Superintendent Van Nispen. So when you said 910, 910, and 845, these are the new times or these are the current times? Superintendent Van Nispen. Thank you, and through the chair to uh, Trustee Bites. I do apologize. Those were the current start times um, that I'd indicated. So in the case of Admiral Collingwood and Severn Shores, uh, they would move to, uh, from a start time of 9.10 to 9.25, and Coldwater and Moonstone would move from a start time of 8.45 to 9.30. And their um, end of day would adjust accordingly. Okay, any other questions? Uh, super, or, tr Trustee Lloyd. Um, thank you, and through you to the table, um, Severn Shores and the Coldwater Public School are, are within my area, and uh, Moonstone is within um, Trustee Grommet's area, so we were um, well advised of these changes in advance and what was coming, and I know um, you know, the, the cold water public school, Moonstone Public School is a significant change, but I think, I don't really think when we have a $2 million deficit in, tra in transportation that we really have a lot of options. We have to make those decisions that, you know, result in those savings so we can work within our allotted um, uh, funding in, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate these may be difficult for parents, but it's the situation we're in with an outdated uh, transportation funding model and without changes that we keep getting promised are going to happen or a review that's going to happen with action. So, you know, it is difficult and it, it may be challenging, but uh, I, I, I support these as difficult as they are. Trustee Bites? Yes, I just had a comment and then a question. I just wanted to point out that um, obviously I completely support these bell time changes in option one, um, starting school at 925 and 930 is really makes it more equitable throughout the county because this is this is the start times that we experience in the south that we have for many years. So I think um, I think this change, if anything, makes us more in law every all the school, all the elementary schools anyway, to be uh, more in line, which I fully support. My question is, through you, Chair, to Superintendent Van Nispen, what happens if we vote on option one, Coterminous Board votes on option two, aren't there only two people on the transportation consortium? So do they have an arm wrestle to duke it out? Like, how, how do we decide? Superintendent Van Nispen. Thank you, and through the Chair to Trustee Bites. Um, this is a, an information item. I don't believe we're voting on this one. Um, so either option, option one or option two, it's the same for us. Um, it's all contingent on what the uh, coterminous board um, does with regards to their recommending um, option number two. Okay, Trustee Lloyd. Uh, thank you, and through you to the table, just for clarity. So these recommendations were recommended to us by the Transportation Consortium to our staff for cost savings. And, and so this is an information item for us just to let us know that these are the, you know, after consultation with the local trustees, that these are the changes that will be happening for this coming fall. And so then they will, will let the Transportation Consortium staff know that. Trustee Bates. Thank you. Through you <clears throat> to the table, maybe Chair Lloyd can 
provide some information. I understand that this is an information item, but I'm wondering, so the consortium recommended these changes, and there's two options. The first one saves us more money, almost to the tune of 100 grand more. Um, so whose decision is it? Is it the consortium? Or because didn't, wasn't there something that the coterminous board, it almost sounded like you said the coterminous board gets to decide. Um, who would like to address that? Director. Thank you, and through you, Chair Armstrong, Trustee Bites. Uh, it's a good question, but we have different processes and different policies based on the boards. Um, these recommendations are within policy for our boards, um, uses of bell times. So, for example, right now, um, 9.30 is the outside time for early bell time for an elementary school. That's as far as it could go. If we had been going past that time, it would have had to be a decision item. The, the separate board has a different process with regards to their allocation and my understanding is that their staff is recommending to their trustees only option two at this point. They may have considered option one but they are only bringing forward option two to their trustees. Trustee Bates? Sorry, I just... Maybe I'm just thick today. I don't, I don't know. I just, so who gets to decide? I just don't understand. Well, the consortium the, decides? The, the consortium, we, we set the policies, as the director said, that we've said our bell times have to be within these parameters. No school can start before this time elementary. No school can start after this time. And then I think there's also time on the bus. We have another policy about that. As far as the consortium level situation, there is a, there is a consortium group, but um, there has to be there has to be um, co cooperative effort. In other words, if we were if we were in a mechanism where our board couldn't agree with the other partner, the, the coterminous board, and we do have I think we used to have other partners too, there is a mechanism. So I'll, and Trustee Lloyd's been on that the consortium group, so I'll let her take care of that. But because this is operational, we can't always, because we're the stronger partner, we don't necessarily have more votes, but there has to be a cooperative effort because the same buses are being used for both groups of, of partners, of, of, of boards. So anyway, um, Trustee Lloyd. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you. Yeah, you were correct. This is. A, a recommendation from the transportation consortium staff to our staff and then it's an operational decision made by staff as it's within policy that we have set right the coterminous board has different processes and some things their boards approve different things based upon their bylaws right so they may operate separate to us or different to us or process things differently but this is within policy these changes so it doesn't require our approval Staff make the decision and then they notify the transportation consortium. But, but just to clarify, there is a mechanism if the partners couldn't agree at the consortium level to solve that. Is that not correct? Uh, through, the, through you to the table, yes, there is. And, and um, we work uh, diligently to try and resolve those issues. And then the bylaws of the transportation consortium outline how disputes can be resolved as well. Confused. Okay, Trustee Bites. Any other thing? Thank you. I understand that our process is different than um, their process. They have a bylaw which requires this to be approved by the board, whereas we um, go, we have a different process. I understand that. <clears throat> My concern is, is here there is a difference between two options that could potentially save us a hundred grand more for option one and you're telling me that our coterminous board is not even presenting option one to the board their board of trustees for even consideration for some unknown reason and so I'm this seems wrong to me um, you know like I get that it's but if we can save money, right? Like we want more money to go to the programs and the kids and we have a busing problem. And 
I know 100 grand isn't a lot of money in the whole scheme of everything, but it is still a big chunk of money. And so I am just, um, I'm wondering, like, I guess you were saying that there's a dispute thing. So do then do we do our staff lodge a complaint with the consortium or how does that like I just well, don't understand just, just to clarify I think the thing is we do have a policy of, of and there and our our um, uh, administrators are following the policy but if we want to change our policy to say when you have a change of a savings of 50,000 we want to know about it and improve I guess we could change our policy but we're not well we're not at that that's not what's on the table so they are following everything in our policy and we're giving them the operational discretion but superintendent and this man i know you want to speak and and, and chair lloyd so i'll let okay chair lloyd. i'd like to move that we go into closed session discuss this further please because it is contractual too right is that on it needs that basis? to be discussed in closed session on that basis if you, if we want to, the the track that you're going on about the dispute mechanism is a, a legal issue so therefore we'll have a motion to move into closed session moved by trustee lloyd seconded by trustee bites that the business and facility committee uh, go into closed session can i have the vote again sorry all those in favor and closed yes okay i don't okay yes thank you thank you okay we are going into close we'll let you know when we're ready to, for that Okay, we're now recording in process. The item that we're dealing with at this time is the Simple County Student Transportation Consortium proposed bell time efficiencies. Are there any other questions for Superintendent Van Nisman on the matter? I don't see any. Okay, so that's um, not item one completed. Item two, for information, contract awards within approved budget, BF-I-2, and again, Superintendent Van Nisman. Thank you, and through the chair uh, to the table. Um, as con construction season uh, ramps up and we're getting our tenders back for jobs that uh, we'll be doing, uh, we've got a number of them here tonight. Uh, so the first up is uh, for the Tech Beaton um, Elementary School, the in interior child care renovations. This was actually a, or is a, a capital priority being funded by the ministry. And it involves interior child care renovations that will encompass um, an, a, a toddler room and a preschool room, along with all the necessary amenities for a child care, washrooms, kitchen, office, cubby area. Um, and this is being accomplished through renovating uh, three existing classrooms that are currently empty, not being used, and an existing custodial office which has been relocated to another location in the building. Uh, the next tender on the list here is for Bear Creek Secondary School in Steel Street Public School. Uh, this is for door replacements. Um, Bear Creek, we have replacements of uh, uh, three sets of exit doors, and at Steel Street we're uh, replacing um, exit to, uh, a couple of exit doors and then also the removal of a small canopy that's extra low and is causing some safety uh, safety concerns so we'll be dealing with that while we're dealing with the doors we also have a uh, tender for birchview dunes elementary school this is for an interior stair reconstruction um, this is the replacement of in interior stair number three uh, we also will be performing at the same time an upgrade to building automation and um, uh, interior stair reconstruction just just to note it occurs because of all the salt and, and and wet and whatnot that gets brought into the schools our interior stairs do uh do over time um, break down so we do have to do these types of uh types of jobs uh the next tender is for worsley elementary school and this is for a more exterior door replacements um so we're replacing uh four sets of exterior doors um, and also resolving an issue that we currently have with a barrier-free operator on one of our exit doors as well. So we'll, we're dealing with some accessibility issues there. We have the uh, tender for the Fieldcrest Elementary School, uh, some building upgrades. Uh, so we've got uh, the removal of an existing uh, cooling tower and chiller, uh, the replacement of three uh, rooftop units and condensing units, 
as well as replacement of cooling coils and uh, another existing three air handling units. We have uh, the replacement of the roof assembly on section B, if anyone's familiar with the sections on <laughs> the roof of uh, Fieldcrest. Uh, we also have um, the replacement of three rooftop mounted exhaust fans, uh, the entire building automation uh, system, including the control valves. Uh, we have the replacement of two portions of stairs due to deterioration. We have uh, floor finishes in the four stairwells. Uh, we have flooring on the second floor corridor and washrooms. We have painting all the corridors, stairwells, and group washrooms. We have the replacement of seven pairs of uh, doors, including interior and exterior frames. And we have uh, an upgrade to the, uh, the building monitoring system to make it fully addressable. And the last item here is uh, the Elmville District High School. We have uh, washroom renovation. This is in obviously the older uh, section of the school. And we will also be replacing uh, two exterior doors and frames. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for the report? Trustee Bites. Thank you. I have a couple questions <clears throat> through you to Superintendent Ben Nispen. I, th I thought that the child care at Tech Beaton was already up and running. So is this a, I thought that that had already happened? Is this an extra expansion, or are you able to provide when is this opening? Superintendent Smith. Thank you, and uh, through the chair to Trustee Bites. Um, no, you, it, you may recall it as, it, with it being a capital priority, it has come to the table a, a couple of times or mentioned a few times at the table. Um, there was a slight delay um, with it as we did have to go back to the ministry for some additional funding. As we're finding with construction these days, the amounts that were approved a while ago are not sufficient to cover. Um, so that gave us a, a bit of a delay on getting this project started. Um, the work actually did um, begin March break. Um, we are doing some work after hours on weekends, not um, during school time at this point in time. Things will then really ramp up over the summer and we're targeting uh, this fall for opening. I don't think there's any other people to ask questions. So go ahead, or although I should just ask, do you have like more than five questions? No, just two more quick oh, okay. questions. Go, do, do, go ahead. <laughs> I was taking notes. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you did through you to Superintendent Ben Nisman. I just wanted to make sure I got note um, with a you know when we're placing doors, obviously um, having those operators or way to make it accessible is uh, is a is is wonderful and I was just wanted to make sure I believe you said that at Worsley we're installing a new operator and at Elmville is there increases to accessibility at those two schools is I just want to confirm thank you and through the chair to uh, trustee bites um, it was actually only the uh, Worsley elementary um, that is noted here um, that we are addressing uh, the barrier free operator I do believe there's an existing one on that entrance but there is some issues with regards to uh, I'm gonna venture to guess the buzz in the, the doorbell buzz in um, as we have seen that at other uh, at other locations so that will all be dealt with while we're dealing with the door replacement Okay, thank you. So the washroom renovation, usually is there a universal washroom at Elmville? Um, and I'm guess, or are there accessible stalls within these washrooms already? Um, are you able to comment more on the extent of these renovations with respect to accessibility? Thank you, and through the chair to Trustee Bites. Um, I can't speak to the specific details on this wash on uh, this washroom. Uh, it is in the older section of the school, so we do have universal washrooms. We do have accessible washrooms, um, particularly in the newer section of the school. So we are covered from an overall system standpoint. Um, this is just addressing now the older section of the school that needs a little love and care. Okay, and do you have more questions, or you do? I have one last okay. question. And then, and then go ahead, and then Trustee <laughs> okay. Talbert. Thank you. Through you to Superintendent Van Nispen, I want to talk about Fieldcrest and the HVAC replacement. You did mention that we were getting rid of a chiller. Are we 
And I don't know if you know the answer to this. I was just wondering if um, some older chillers have refrigerants that are no longer environmentally approved. And I was wondering if we were getting a new chiller with a more environmentally friendly refrigerant. Or if, if you don't know that, you can answer later. <laughs> Thank you, and through the chair to uh, Trustee Bites. Um, I can't speak to the specifics of these units that are being um, in place. Um, as with any unit that we do install, it will be installed to manufacturing specification. Um, so whether that has a coolant or water um, in it, um, I can't speak to at this time. Trustee Talbot. Chair to uh, Superintendent Bendispin, uh, just one question. I, I think I understand that it's the lowest bid or the, uh, gets gets the contract. Uh, and just a question on that: uh, uh, Bertram, I believe, uh, was non-compliant. Is, is there is that the process? First of all, is it generally the lowest bid, and Bertram's non-compliant? Is there some issue with them, or is it? Superintendent Bendispin. Thank you, and through the chair to uh, Trustee Talbot. Um, so, with any tender. Um, the award, the main factor is um, price. However, there will be components or necessary items that are required um, in order for the tender to be compliant, um, be it bidding on all the items that are, that are being asked for. Um, and um, in this case here, uh, there was um, an element that was not included in their bid. Um, and so therefore they were removed and um, uh, deemed non-compliant and so then we just had to work with the remaining uh, bidders okay. any other questions on the report for information and I do not see any the next item for information is number three 2023 24 budget components uh, report BF1 BF I 3 superintendent Van Nisman again thank you Thank you, and uh, through the chair. Um, so tonight we're going to continue um, our presentation of elements of the proposed budget. We have some more schedules that are coming forward that ultimately will make up um, the building blocks of our overall uh, budget. Um, so although the provincial government did table their, um, the provincial budget, we have not uh, seen or been made aware of the release of the technical paper um, for the education sector. The details behind, and these are the details behind the funding um, for uh, next year. As such, we continue forward with our, uh, the best information we have at this time. Um, staffing, uh, the staffing costs are projected to be over 86% of our operating spend uh, for 24-25. Um, as you will see in the package of schedules, uh, we are not covering specifically tonight the staffing component. Um, I'll be bringing that forward to the closed session of uh, BNF, a special BNF on April 19th, where we'll get into the details of, um, of positions. Um, as a school board, we continue to see operating pressures in the following areas. Sick leave. We have seen sick leave rise from its pre-pandemic level of 17 million to a level of 22 million last year and projecting 23 million this year. Um, so it is a constant pressure um, and something that we do have uh, focus on and are trying to, uh, to address. Transportation, as we've already uh, spoken about tonight, uh, great efforts have been made in the current school year to look into and address transportation efficiencies. Uh, we are still um, seeing and with the uh, Current, current funding model, a deficit being projected of $800,000 for the 23-24 school year. It has been strongly suggested that the new transportation funding model will be a part of the 23-24 budget cycle. However, until we get the technical paper, um, we don't know uh, what that may look like. And so uh, we just continue to budget with the existing model. Again, not knowing what potentially that new model will look like, we can't say if it will be favorable, detrimental, um, or status quo. Um, in addition, route efficiencies uh, will continue to be pursued. Spe special education, this is always a pressure as we see more students with more varying and complex needs attending our schools, and this will be discussed at the joint uh, SEAC BNF meeting on April 19th. In your capital school renewal and school condition improvement funding, we currently receive approximately $20 million to address the backlog of capital needs on an annual basis. And these capital needs include um, roofs, boilers, lighting, floors, parking, lots, et cetera. 
Um, a number of the tenders presented those tonight. Unfortunately, as we've seen throughout the construction industry, costs, costs have riven, risen by up to 45% in the last two years. Without targeted increase by the ministry, our projects will have to be either reduced in scope or will, we will be addressing fewer needs in a given year. Um, either path has our renewal needs list growing faster than we are able to, uh, to try to address. So that being said, I'm um, going to be going through schedule by schedule, stopping at uh, the end of each to, to uh, reply to any questions. Um, so for the first schedule uh, that we have um, in front of us tonight, and I don't know if we've got the... thinking about it there we go thank you so the first schedule um, that we have uh, presented here is our operating expenses and so this is uh, a summary of um, our expected spend for the 2023-2024 um, uh, school year um, so as presented at the last uh, meeting enrollment is increasing by 2.5 percent or um, just shy of 1400 ADE average daily enrollment. As such, we will attract more revenues and obviously incur more costs. Our operating expenditures are expected to exceed $670 million uh, next year, down the bottom right. Um, this is an, in, an overall increase year over year of $2.3 million. Uh, please note that uh, the Learning Recovery Fund or COVID funding um, of $7.5 million, which has been provided to us in the current school year. We have not incorporated into uh, the 23-24 budget um, as we do not know, again, we don't have the technical paper on whether it is being totally eliminated, reduced, or will continue in the 23-24 school year. So uh, what you have in front of you is the conservative approach. We've removed that 7.5 million in spend. and. Um, on, obviously on the revenue side as well. Um, some of the spending, um, non-staffing uh, changes that uh, we are seeing on some of the line items here. Uh, you'll see on the elementary, uh, we have a reduction in other expenses. This is um, elements of the learning recovery funding being uh, removed. Secondary, um, again, other expenses uh, reduced. We're seeing the learning, that's stemming from the learning recovery fund. Under school support, uh, we have increased uh, spending, and this is for software licenses and fees, cost to service the WAN, the, the wide area network, um, as well as server replacement and upgrades. Um, those all total about $850,000. Adult and continuing education. Uh, we see an increase in spending here as we move back to pre-pandemic uh, levels uh, with more international students. Um, coming and attending our schools, um, and this will result obviously in more costs, um, as well as um, incorporated here is the home stay costs. We do collect the revenues um, to offset those from the students coming in. Um, as well with uh, adult and continuing education, as we're coming out of the pandemic and, um, and ramping up, um, did get a question from uh, Trustee uh, Rafiq uh, with regards to with immigration as well, are we seeing um, an increased increased supports available there? And so from a budgeting standpoint um, for the ongoing program, we've been conservative and we've set the service, the dollars at the current service levels. However, operationally, we do have the ability and will strive for, um, if we do have more students come to us, uh, we do identify more programming needs. Uh, we will be um, looking at expanding and our operations can um, accommodate that. Special education, we'll speak to that on uh, April 19th. Uh, we have NTIP, uh, this is the new teacher introduction program. Um, we have uh, an increase with expected, uh, an expected increase in the number of new teachers. Priorities and partnership funds, um, or uh, this is, um, or our supplementary, what used to be known as supplementary grants. Um, this is only budgeted once we have the technical paper or a uh, transfer agreement in place. Um, so this line, we expect it to increase once we get that technical paper and we find out what initiatives are going to be funded um, by the ministry for the uh, upcoming school year. Supports for students fund. Um, you will note here that we have included uh, for all employee groups the spending against the anticipated funding that is tied to ratified union agreements. 
Uh, we await further direction from the ministry through the technical paper, as in 22-23, the ministry allowed access to these funds in good faith while bargaining progressed. Um, however, we have reflected uh, what the, the spend will be. Uh, under board admin support, we have our regional internal audit team that we're the banker board for. Um, they, although we're operating with one less auditor, they are utilizing more consulting engagements. Um, and they do have funds from prior years that they do have access to um, that they will be incurring. Uh, we have also increased our legal and investigation budget um, by 500000 um, as we've seen um, a couple of reports presented at the, uh, the board table the last couple of years, we have seen that increase. Um, so we've now uh, covered ourselves there. And then school operations, um, this is one that I'm sure everybody is seeing. We're seeing an increase in utility costs. Um, and as well, uh, about 864000 is the increase we're expecting to see next year. And then site maintenance. Um, and this is for snow plowing and um, grass cutting. Uh, we're seeing an increase there, and that is, again, increases we're seeing out um, out in the market. And we did have uh, some contracts come due and are up for, uh, up for tender, so we do expect to see some increases there. Um, so with that, I'll take any uh, questions on expenditures. Okay, are there any questions on the table? On, on ta I should say tab table one, that's what I mean. Um, Trustee Rafiq. Thank you. I do have a few questions. Maybe I could uh, start with a couple. Um, okay, so one question I didn't realize I was going to have, um, absenteeism. Those are huge numbers, obviously. And um, I'm just kind of curious, I guess, if the approach to that has changed post-pandemic. Um, I'm an employer myself obviously a much smaller scale, but I, I feel that the, the political view and the world view of, of sick leave and absenteeism has really has changed over the last couple of years. And so, I don't know, I guess I'm just curious, just from the conversation here, if the approach to that absenteeism is different than it used to be, or I don't know if that makes sense as a question. Superintendent Jeffs, maybe. <laughs> Superintendent Jeffs. Thank you, Chair Armstrong, through, uh, and through you to Vice Chair Rafiq. So procedurally, from the board's perspective, things haven't changed. Um, and in fact, we've become uh, a little more vigilant in terms of what we call trending days. So those are um, days that would be deemed to be very popular for people to take off, right, Fridays before um, certain holiday long weekends, those sorts of things. So we do, we do monitor those very closely and advise people who, um, staff members who have typically taken days in the past around those popular times, um, that we're looking for them this year as well. I, I just think generally in the workplace, there, there's a, a lot more absence tied to stress in the workplace post pandemic. The culture in workplaces has changed dramatically um, between pre-pandemic pre and, and post-pandemic. Um, you know, there, there are very healthy sick leave provisions in, in the collective agreements, and um, I, I know that's an issue that's being raised provincially um, by OPSPA with the ministry um, in an effort for all boards. I don't think what we're seeing is necessarily out of line with what other boards are experiencing as well. Um, but it's a concern and, and, and I'm aware that OPSP has raised, uh, raised the issue with the ministry and we're hoping to, I think, make some progress in this round of bargaining. Um, haven't seen that really with the, uh, the agreements that have been um, signed to date but uh, the large permanent teacher agreements are still yet to come, so we'll see if anything happens in that regard there. Okay, any, any other question on that? Yeah, um, that's great, thank you very much. I do have another question. Okay, okay. and then uh, I'll just so you're aware, um, the next, um, I'll, I'll call on Trustee Wilson online after yep. you're done your question, One thank more. you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, Okay, as um, Superintendent Van Nisman alluded to, I was curious about, um, I know there's been a, a great increase in immigration in our country, and I just, I to me, that would mean that we would have a lot more, you know, a lot more students, 
um, new English language learners, but also possibly a lot more adult um, learners signing up with us. And so um, you did mention that, but I was just very curious on that because I feel like that's probably a big change with us. And um, I know you said we were going to discuss, you know, staffing would be later and things like that, but I guess I'm just also curious, and forgive me, I'm new and I'm still trying to figure all this out, if there's, if would there be other supports there as well that wouldn't be staffing? Is there other supports they may need? Maybe my guess, my question is getting too far out in the weeds. <laughs> I guess I'm just curious. Like I feel like that would be a big change as well. So I'm just curious. Like I said, I know you're going to come back to those numbers, but it is something that I'm really wondering about. Superintendent Van Nistelen. Thank you, and through the chair to uh, Trustee Rafiq. Um, I can't speak to specifics with regards to programming in our uh, continuing education um, field. Um, however, we do have the new Welcome, uh, the new Welcome Center uh, program that is uh, supporting, um, in particular, the immigration um, element. Um, as I indicated, our continuing education group is um, looking at their programming, um, looking at funding that becomes available um, for the addition of programs. And so uh, we do have the capacity to, when that's identified, if that's, um, if more students are coming to us, um, we do have that ability to adjust to that. Um, I can take back um, and come forward um, when we are speaking um, at that later date with regards to staffing um, with some more details uh, around the, uh, the Con Ed uh, program. Trustee Wilson, you had a, a question, or your hand was up for a question or comment? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and through you to the table. Just to um, sort of uh, comment or piggyback on uh, Trustee Rafiq's question about absenteeism, um, post-pandemic, uh, I know in my own workplace as well, People now, um, when they are sick, are staying home. Um, previous, when people had colds or s some of those symptoms, um, would tend to, you know, go to work and go into the workplace. Um, I feel, however, now, um, since the pandemic, that's sort of, uh, I know, frowned upon. Um, people don't want others coming to work, uh, sh showing signs and symptoms, um, you know, of cold or flu, because, you know, as we know, both are um, the same symptoms of, of COVID. So I think that may also have impacted um, the absentee uh, rates. Um, just as said, I know even personally myself, I work in a small office and, um, I was sick and it was not COVID. Uh, however, I felt it was best that I stay home um, for a few days versus, you know, going into the office, uh, you know, blowing my nose and coughing and whatnot. So I think um, that could also explain some of the numbers. So just wanted to comment on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Trustee Bites. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to um, actually also had a question in relation to one of um, Trustee Rafiq's questions and it regards immigration. Um, I believe the government um, made or reduced barriers to immigration for um, you know, obviously skilled trades and stuff, but I believe fairly recently they increased it to include school bus drivers and EAs. And I was wondering how that, um, if that's in effect now, or if we're going to, um, cause presumably that change would increase immigration and, and, um, affect our staffing. I just didn't know if it had had effect or if we were expecting anything. Superintendent Jeffs, do you want to comment? Yeah, thank you. And and uh, through you, Chair Armstrong, to Trustee Bites, uh, not familiar with, I mean, I'm familiar that with the fact that the government has, has lifted some uh, or has, I think, committed to taking some some additional um, individuals in in the country. And, and um, 
I'm not aware that they had sort of targeted specific jobs, but uh, that may be the case. I, I just honestly haven't heard that, so I'm not sure I can comment further. Any other questions on this table? Uh, Trustee Lloyd. Um, thank you, and I just, uh, I know uh, Superintendent Venisman has mentioned this learning recovery fund that is set to add the funding that we get. And I did provide it to you in the update um, from the minister's conference call last week, but it was brought to his concern that there were people concerned that this funding was ending at a time when we see the needs of our students greater than they've ever been. And in that call, the minister assured us that he was aware of the situation and the needs and the escalating needs and that he, I think his words were he would not leave us hanging were his words and there would be allowances for that within the GSN. So we will have to see once it's released if there is uh, uh, money behind the words um, for the boards. But I just thought I'd bring that to everybody's attention because it was brought to his during the chair's call. Trustee Rafiq. Thanks so much. And through the chair, so just one more question. Um, so I, I understand um, we will have our, our combined SEAC meeting with BNF coming up. Um, however, I just wanted to clarify. So I see a projected increase with special education funding. Um, we hear in the ministry, from the ministry often in the news, that they are increasing funding for special education. But as the chair of SEAC for several years, I just always feel it's important to point out that my understanding is that the only increases that we see are when we have more students who utilize special education funding. They attract more dollars, but we're not really receiving more money to spend on special education funding. So I'm not sure if my question should go to Superintendent Samus or not, but I just wanted to make sure that I was clear on that and like I said I just always feel that's really important to point out because special education is a you know a huge spender for us and and it's not always accurate that we receive the big increases that I kind of see you talked about in the media. Superintendent Nisman. Thank you and through the chair to uh, Trustee Rafiq. Um, I won't venture to guess what the definition of big is um, we do see the increase as our enrollment does go up um, it does attract more funding through the funding model um, as it stands um, looking at the schedule in front of you um, you will see that the expenditure there is a difference year over year part of that is the accounting piece when it comes to deferred revenue so um, if you'll recall in prior dis, uh, prior presentations special education dollars that are enveloped can only be spent on special education if they're not spent in the current year they roll over and they're spent in the subsequent uh, year or years and so what we see here in our year-over-year -year comparison is in the current year uh, we are spending um, of deferred revenue, so dollars from prior years of about 4.4 million, that's incorporated in here. Um, that's one-time funding, so that's on top of um, our in-year. We then we then go into our projection for next year. We do have an, we do see an increase in the funding that we're receiving, and the deferred revenue that we're utilizing is only 1.1 million. So that's why the spend year over year, you're seeing a bit of a decrease, but from an in-year funding piece, the additional students are attracting additional dollars. Okay, are we ready for, oh, Trustee Bites. Sorry, thank you, through you, Chair Armstrong, to Superintendent Venisman. Um, I know you said we're gonna go into staffing um, in more detail. I was just wondering how, if you had any insights into how the new requirement for all grade nine and 10 students to take a technology course is will affect our funding and our um, staffing. Presumably we would have to hire more technology teachers and if everyone is, if we're, more people are taking the course and we may need more labs or more workshops, um, do we have any information on this associate director thank you and through you uh, chair to trustee bite so that is a September 2024 initiative that has been announced with no uh, discussion or further planning so it's been announced um, we have not heard anything further on what it will actually look like when it comes into fruition um, so we will bring further updates when it is 
fully planned from the ministry. Trustee Lloyd. Thank you, and through you to the table further to that, there is consultation taking place with respect to that this coming fall. So it's not uh, um, it's not something that there it, that happens for this coming fall. It's the fall after that, and so they they still have the consultation. They've announced it, but the consultation piece has to be done. And that's a surprise. <laughs> I'm just saying that doesn't always happen with new curricular. Planning. Anyway, uh, any other questions on the table on this uh, chart? Okay, Superintendent Van Nissen. Thank you, and through the chair. Um, so the next um, next couple schedules you have, section one, uh, this is the debt carrying costs for existing capital uh, debentures and loans. Um, so this is uh, an information piece that just lays out the um, debt that is currently um, that the board um, owns. Uh, it also presents uh, what next year we will be um, paying in principal and interest, uh, which equates to about $21.5 million. Um, please note that uh, all debt is recognized and supported, funded by the ministry. Um, the next schedule, um, section 1.1, this is a detailed um, debt cost um, schedule. This was a schedule that was previously requested um, to be included in the budget package. And um, it essentially, it just indicates where projects occurred and the debt that funded those projects at, uh, at the time. And with that, I'll take any questions on debt. Just, just to clarify, projects that occurred, so we know there, we receive funds, but not necessarily 100% of what's needed until like it, it, it's, it's not deposited into the bank till at least some of these projects are completed. Is that just sort of the carrying? So uh, through the chair, to the chair. Um, so in the prior model, so back when these debt instruments were being incurred, school boards were um, getting, were funding these capital projects um, on their own, if you will. So we would have to, for example, in 2001, um, the sinking fund. Um, we had to go out and we had to obtain financing so that we could have capital projects or perform capital projects at Algonquin Ridge, Bear Creek, Birchview Dunes, uh, Clearview Meadows, uh, Clearview Meadows, and so on um, for that. So it was just at the time obtaining the the financing in order to make those uh, those projects happen. Thank you for that. Questions, Trustee Bites. Thank you. Through you to um, Superintendent Van Nispen. Um, I just want to clarify so that I understand this. So for 14 years, essentially, we were allowed to fund our own capital projects, and we are no longer allowed to do that, and there are no exceptions. Even if there's an emergency capital project, we cannot use surplus funds. The only way to fund capital, any capital project, whether it's a new school or um, significant renovations, is by ministry grant. Is that correct? Superintendent Van Nisman. Thank you, and through the, the chair to trustee bites. Um, to put it simply, if you are wanting to expand your footprint, then you need ministry approval. Um, through that ministry approval, it could be, uh, this is where our business cases come in. So it may be, we're looking for the ministry to fund the whole project. Um, it may be a combination of dollars that may have been identified at the board, be it POD, that the ministry will point us towards. Um, but at the end of the day, the projects are submitted to the ministry and it is through their approval that we are allowed to proceed with those. When it comes to the debt instruments, in a prior, um, prior, uh, procedures, um, if you will. Um, it may have required ministry approval, but then it was on the school boards to get the financing thereon. Um, that changed from us having to go out to external, be it banks, be it getting sinking funds, to the ministry then through the Ontario Financing uh, Group. We were directed to them and they were providing us with that debt. 
Then in 20, 2014 was the last time we saw that. Then the ministry decided, you know what, this doesn't make any sense. We'll just do it centrally here. Um, we're, we're doing the approvals. We're doing the uh, we're doing all that work. We might as well just keep things centrally here, and we will provide at milestones throughout the projects that they approve um, the funding for those projects. Trustee Bites. Yes, thank you. A quick follow up through you to Superintendent Ben Nisman. So, the projects listed on this previous way of funding capital projects. That would be equivalent to our, I believe you said it, to the type of $20 million we now get for capital renewal projects, or is the, did this include new schools as well? Thank you. And through the, the Chair of Trustee Bates, so this would be a combination of small jobs to big jobs um, at the time. This was just the, the way we fundled capital items at the time. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so those tables we've completed, so continue. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, so now we're on to Section 2, which is capital expenditures. So this gives you the um, high level. Um, spend, uh, projected spend in capital that we will see for 23-24. Uh, um, so the first uh, part of this chart shows the in-year capital um, operating funding that we receive, the school renewal and the school condition improvement. Um, as indicated earlier, we're receiving a little around $20 million for those endeavors. And then we also have our temporary uh, accommodation. And this is used for items like uh, portables, the maintenance thereon, maintaining, uh, renovating, buying new, uh, which we have over 360 in use. And as well, it uh, also pays for leased space, um, such as our Simcoe Shores locations that we have uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the county. Uh, presented here as well is um, capital priorities that have been approved and are being funded by the ministry, um, and each one is in different stages of uh, development, um, which we'll note that Marshview opened this past Monday. <laughs> um, the following schedule, Schedule uh, 2A, um, this is the um, projects that uh, we are looking to move forward with, um, with that renewal and school condition funding um, in the 23-24 school year. Um, just quickly running down uh, the list here at Andrew Hunter, uh, we've got two sets of projects going on there. We've got washroom upgrades where we're renovating four existing gender uh, neutral washrooms to the and uh, crea creating one universal washroom. Uh, we also have replacement of aged and deterior deteriorating exit lighting, skylights, interior doors, hardware, millwork, uh, hot water tanks, and mechanical ventilation units um, being addressed. Angus Morrison, uh, we're looking to uh, replace uh, some of the aged and deteriorating interior and exterior doors, hardware, windows, uh, millwork, carpeting, VCT flooring, and doing some painting. Uh, Barry North, uh, we've got a couple projects going on there. Uh, one, we've got the science room refur uh, refurbishments, uh, and that's renovating two of the science classrooms uh, and their uh, corresponding workrooms to the current standards that we have uh, elsewhere in the board. And as well, we're also going to uh, be replacing some exterior windows, doors, overhead doors, um, some interior doors, uh, ceiling, we've got lighting um, in some areas that needs to be done, flooring, um, and some interior stair work and exhaust fans that need to be addressed. Uh, over at Bear Creek, uh, we've got uh, the replacement of uh, some roofing. Uh, we've got, again, exterior doors and hardware. We've got flooring uh, that needs to be uh, replaced, mechanical, a mechanical chemical feed system um, that needs to be uh, uh, addressed. We have some exhaust fans and some asphalt in some laneways that needs to be uh, replaced. Down in Bradford at uh, Bradford District High School, we've got a um, phase one uh, refurbishment of student group washrooms uh, and gender neutral single washrooms. Uh, this includes the replacement of toilets, partitions, uh, the washroom fixtures, basins, uh, accessories, and creating barrier, barrier free uh, stalls where possible. Uh, up in Coldwater, we have the fire alarm system upgrade. 
Um, that's sort of self-explanatory. And then we've also got some interior work, uh, again, flooring, uh, millwork, ceilings, lighting, um, and whatnot. Cannot, uh, we've got the replacement of some roofing, exterior doors uh, and windows and painting, Kuchising Heights. Uh, we've got a reconfiguration in addition to the parking lot to address parking deficiencies and uh, address some snow storage issues um, in the winter. Eastview, this is a continuation of the work that we've been doing over a number of years as we're refurbishing that, uh, that whole location. Uh, we've got replacement of uh, some roofing, exhaust fans, uh, the dust collector in the tech area, uh, backup generator, uh, elevator, gymnasium partitions and millwork, uh, flooring, and then also some interior stairs need to be addressed. Over at Fieldcrest, we're going to, we're going to uh, do some work reinstating the play field. Um, as you know, that was a holding school. We've had a lot of portals now removed off that site, so we're going to be going in and refurbishing that play field to get some greenery back. Over at Innisdale, we've got um, phase one um, that's going to occur um, on the, uh, this is replacing some exterior windows, um, some doors, uh, doing some painting, lighting, interior stairs. And as well, we're going to be um, renovating the science classrooms and workrooms to bring them up to the current standards that uh, we're seeing. Over at Innisfil Central, we've got some asphalt uh, play area and parking lot and laneways that needs to be, needs to be addressed. Um, as always, we set, uh, set aside some funds for the emergency projects that come up throughout the uh, school year. We also have a couple categories here, um, the various doors and windows replacements, again, as we're identifying issues throughout the year, uh, we address them. Irrigation systems, uh, this is for our sports fields at our secondary um, schools. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the irrigation systems, um, addressing the controls on them so that we have a common control across the board that can be done remotely so that we have better control of um, energy use and water consumption. Uh, special education, we always have dollars set aside that uh, working with uh, Superintendent Samus and the principals of Spec Ed, identifying capital needs within the, the programming there. And lastly, we've got Warminster septic expansion and parking expansion. So we're looking at adding some additional parking there uh, to address current needs and then as well um, looking at expanding the septic to accommodate future portables on that site. And with that, I'll take any questions with regards to capital. Okay, any questions? Trustee Weitz. Thank you. Through you, Chair Armstrong, to Superintendent Benispin. I noticed you used a term, and I was just wondering if the two terms were interchangeable. You mentioned that we would be doing some um, gender neutral washroom upgrades, and I'm wondering if that is the same as creating a universal washroom or if there is some difference, or if that's just hanging a different sign, or are we actually increasing accessibility? Superintendent. Uh, thank you, and through the chair to uh, Trustee Bites. Um, so that would have been um, when they were scoping out the project, they identified that the gender neutral um, wash that's been identified as gender neutral may not be universal uh, with regards to accessibility, um, but they've identified that that washroom or washroom set needs to be um, upgraded, addressed. Trustee Bites? Yes, thank you. Through you, I just want to make sure. So you, so basically, um, a gender neutral washroom is a universal washroom or not. Or it is our, the board's goal to convert all gender neutral washrooms into also be universal washrooms. Is this correct? Superintendent? Thank you. Through the, through the chair, it's Trustee Bites. Um, unfortunately, we can't renovate all washroom spaces to make them accessible or univer universally um, used, if you will. Um, there is just some, in you get into the older buildings, there is just restrictions on what we can do. However, um, the washrooms are still usable. Uh, we, they're single use washrooms um, for uh, the gender, gender neutral um, option. And so we do maintain them, bring them up to, uh, up to uh, uh, current standards. We just may not be able to make them accessible. For, for clarification in regards to washrooms, in future builds, especially high schools, would they all become universal without any doors, like the S entries without doorways, or is that something that is just, again, doors are needed for fire um, regulations for, for these um, facilities? 
Uh, thank you, and through the chair to the chair. Um, there's a couple different factors that come into those designs. Definitely, um, when it comes to fire code and whatnot, with um, the newer buildings all having sprinklers and whatnot, um, that has allowed us to do some more of those design um, elements where we don't need doors on the washrooms for separation. So an example would be in the new Marsh View um, that just opened. Yes, their washrooms are that S. You walk in, it's like the airport, if you will. You walk sort of around the corner to get into the, the main area. Um, so definitely as much as possible with the designs that we, uh, that we have, we do try to make as accessible, um, definitely meeting all standards, if not going above. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Okay, go ahead, Superintendent Van Nisman. Thank you, and through the chair. Um, so the next uh, schedule that we have here is our accumulated surplus um, available for compliance. Um, so this is uh, an information piece where we project, excuse me, um, at the end of the current school year, so August 31st, 2023, uh, where we believe our um, accumulated surplus uh, balances will be. Um, so just to refresh from the financial statement presentation earlier um, this year, uh, unappropriated uh, surplus, this has no set purpose or, or direction, um, and these are funds that can only be accessed through board motion. Um, so we're projecting that we'll, uh, we'll be at uh, just shy of $14 million, uh, at the end of the school year. Um, for under the available for compliance, and so this is um, where there is a set purpose for these funds, um, be it previous, uh, through previous um, budgeting and direction or ministry direction, and have been uh, set aside to be spent um, on future, the purpose that they were designated for. Um, and so you can see we've got some facility renewal, um, other board appropriated that would have um, items like school basic budget, Again, we allocate funds to the schools. If the school doesn't spend it this year, it rolls over to the, the next year. So that's where you'll see those type of items, uh, the sinking fund, um, and then committed capital projects that we're uh, currently working on. And with that, I'll take any questions. Okay, any questions on that table? Trustee Bites. Thank you, more of, uh, I just wanna confirm something through you, Chair Armstrong, to Superintendent, Superintendent Van Nispen. So we, this $2.174 million that we have in less of accumulated surplus, that is the transportation shortfall. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Superintendent Nisbet. Thank you, and uh, through the chair to the table. Uh, so the last schedule here is the um, deferred revenue. And again, this is um, a projection of where we're going to be at the end of the current school year uh, with regards to funds. And again, these are funds that have been received for a specific purpose um, and will be recognized when they're utilized. Um, the best example is the special education funding. As I indicated earlier, it is enveloped. It must be spent on special education. Don't spend it this year, it rolls over to next year. Uh, we also have uh, on the schedule the internal audit. This is the regional internal audit where the banker board, um, if you will, so their, their funds are uh, segregated um, from us as well. Again, if they don't spend it, it gets rolled forward. Uh, we have the priorities and partnership funds um, that have their uh, designated use. Uh, again, not used, roll over. Um, and then we've got some other operating unearned um, funds which um, this is uh, examples in here include tuition fees that are collected for international students. You're collecting the dollars now, but they're attending in the fall. Um, so this is just the dollars being set aside and then they'll be applied when the expenditures actually occur. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions. Any questions? Trustee Bates. Sorry, thank you. Through you, Chair Armstrong, I just wanted to make sure I understood one of the numbers on here. With regard to education development charges, and are we not collecting any development charges for the next year? I just see a nil, and we right now have collected, we have a deficit of 61 million in, no, sorry, 20 million. Can you just? explain exactly where I'm seeing the ever-growing 
education development charge deficit on this schedule. Superintendent. Thank you. And through the chair to Trustee Bites. Um, so this is the deferred revenue schedule. And so, yes, you've identified that we have hit that point where we have spent all the EDC dollars that have been collected, historically collected, and are now going, going into a deficit. So you will not see a balance here for unused EDC uh, development charges. Um, that has now moved to a different section of the balance sheet. Any other questions? I don't see any online questions. I think that's correct. Okay. All right, Superintendent Van Nisman, do you have any closing remarks? <laughs> I guess my question, too, is I know we're meeting again with our Special Education Committee, but if, if we do receive more detailed um, announcements, does that mean there's more meetings in May than what you might have expected or just if you want to comment about where we might be heading if we get information if we don't we're just sort of pausing 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 until we do i suspect thank you and um through the chair to the table um so we're always trying to operate with the best information we have and so depending on what the technical paper looks like uh, we've talked about a couple of items here i.e the the learning recovery fund um, if that happens to appear or in some form appears um, then we will um, integrate that as best uh, as best we can into the documents depending on the timing when they come forward um, we will still continue to endeavor to in order to meet our timing um, have the complete package come forward um, at that May BNF um, meeting um, unless there is a significant change in the technical paper that requires a deeper look or some more planning put into it in which case we may defer that out push that out um, but for all intents and purposes we are on track and assistant manager Cote who's sitting over there <laughs> watching um, is at the ready and is checking hourly if that technical paper has uh, come in so uh, we were we will do everything we can in order to uh, meet the timelines that we have uh, before us okay thank you and I just just to clarify too usually good news and out or whatever comes on a Monday but the bad news things are for 5 p.m. on a Friday is that still the same game plan from the ministry so okay um, any other questions on I guess the report before we wrap up this part no okay so there's no correspondence other matters for business and facilities I don't see oh trustee Connors I would like to uh, thank um, superintendent Van Nisman and his team and pretty much everybody who worked really hard to get Marshy open I drove by and and well I drove by Sunday with my kids and they're very jealous they actually really wanted it to be a high school it's a very beautiful school <laughs> Well, I told them that is next, hopefully. <laughs> but um, it, it, everyone seemed happy. I saw a lot of social media out there with my their kids with my first day at Marshview's plaques. It was like the first day of school for all those children, and they're very grateful, and I'm very grateful. And um, I'm pretty sure Super uh, Intendant Van Nispen is very grateful that I don't have to bother him every Wednesday, like I have been for the last seven months. <laughs> Yes, that's so exciting. That's such an exciting time. Um, are there any other matters? Are there any notices of motion for the next meeting? Now I'll call for adjournment. May I have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Trustee Rafiq, seconded by Trustee Bites that we adjourn the committee. All those in favor? And that is carried. Have a lovely Easter, everyone. <laughs>